right. Well, thank you for joining us again for another uh, session of Victory Vision. And uh, today we're going to talk about um, success, ministry success. And one of the things we're going to kind of mention today and we'll look at is, you know, a lot of, we have a lot of people in our church that are business minded and they're very good at being business minded. And, and, and I'm thankful for that, to be honest with you. I'm yeah. thankful for people that can do well in business and still do well in ministry and serving the Lord and walking with the Lord. I think sometimes in our circles, we get, we get the mindset that if somebody's doing well in money, that they must be bad, you know, because the, the love of money is the root of all evil. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of those people that I know, they're doing really well in finances and in business. They don't have a love for money. They have a love for God, and they're using their finances and their position in leadership in business to actually be a witness for the Lord. So when we talk about success sometimes, though, success in the Bible and success in business might look a little bit different to some people kind of in the business world or, or in the Bible. And so we're going to kind of just talk mainly, we're trying to mainly talk about success in ministry um, for you today, although some of these things will definitely translate over into business as well. In fact, some of the ones we're going to talk about is commitment and connected and being consistent. Those do cross over very well into business, uh, but we're really trying to focus today on ministry success. And we're here with, you know, a couple of guys we're, we're always here with, Dylan and Micaiah, and they've got a real heart for starting churches, and, and so do I, um, in the state of Texas and getting churches started. And so we've talked a lot lately about, all right, well, if we're going to start something and if we're going to get something really going, what does success look like? And uh, uh, Brother Freddie, your dad said the other day, success is not um, a destination. It's a daily it's a daily walk. So daily, just being successful in my daily walk with God will help you to arrive at an ultimate success with God. And um, and so we're talking about how to start something in ministry, how to see it through, how to grow it, and how to how to be in what we would say successful in ministry. And that's not a reference of how much money's in the bank, how many buses are in the parking right. lot, how many cars, how many people are in the seats. It's not that's not the measure of success. So right. we're going to kind of look at some things about success today. And the first one we want to bring up is the idea of being committed to the place you're going to be or the thing you're going to do. And this works for whether you're a pastor or a leader in ministry, or if you're a servant, a person that's a member of a church, being committed to where God has you so that you can be productive in the place God has you. I think you had a Bible verse you were going to oh, share yeah. with us. Oh, yeah. So the Bible says in Psalms, commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And it's actually fascinating. The first couple of verses in Psalms 37 the Lord used to move us to Texas. We're from Georgia originally. And um, with the topic of commitment, you know, my feeling sometimes you don't feel like being, you know, in Texas, right? So <laughs> it's 110 degrees outside. I don't feel like being in Texas. All the Texans are going, boo, yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> but then you think about raising canes and Whataburger, and it's just like, yeah, suffering well, for Jesus. Bless. Praise the Lord. Man right? from heaven. <laughs> but, no, like having having Scripture to stand on because my feelings will change. My, my mindset might change, but the Word of God never does. Right. And I encourage you, get those verses, uh, the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established, right? So get those verses, stand on them, write them down, and remind yourself. I've gone to Psalms 37, you'll get here, and you know how it is, being human, you'll move out wherever God wants you, and it's just like, God, is this really where I'm supposed to be? I'm committed, but I need that reminder. So having those verses and letting the Lord confirm them in your heart, it's just, it'll grow your faith, but it'll also keep you committed, keep you stable. Right. And and also another verse just to talk about that is in Proverbs sixteen three. It says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. So uh, it's kind of something that you've already placed in your mind is, I'm going to do whatever the Lord wants me to do. Yeah. And so you hear a lot of people say all the time, I feel like the Lord wants me to do this, but then they're so double-minded. And the moment that feelings come and go, they're just, they're somewhere else because it's not really about the Lord. It's about what you want. And mm -hmm. It's about the flesh. And once we've decided, and not decided, but figured out what God wants us to do, then we need to stay with that and stay committed despite our feelings and despite what we think about the situation. 
Um, I know me and Brother Eric were talking um, the other day about there's a gentleman who felt like he was supposed to move here, and he said, I feel like God wants me to move there. And so as soon as he gets out here, like he's, you know, he, he's like, I feel like this is where I'm supposed to be. But he wasn't committed. Um, he, you know, barely came to church. He was um, not involved in just outreach and things like that. And then when when things started happening, situations and circumstances started happening, now he feels like he's supposed to move back to where he came from. But at first he said, this is where God wants me. But when circumstances started to happen, now he feels like he's supposed to go back. But what we were talking about recently is he was not fully committed to where he was and where God wanted him to be. And then as soon as he wasn't committed, circumstances arose. And then he's like, well, maybe I'm not supposed to be here. And then he ends up um, trying to move back to where he came from. I think that, that um, you know, it's hard if you've... If you don't have both feet planted where you're at, it's hard. So if you have one foot in and one foot out, it's easy uh, to to say, all right, I'm gonna I'm just gonna back out of this because it's difficult here. And uh, if your mind or your eyes are in a different place than 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 where you're supposed to be, um, you can you can want to go back. For instance, the uh, Israel, they're headed towards something extremely great, committed that the Lord brought them out, and the Lord's bringing them in. But as soon as they hit a difficulty, they start thinking, well, I remember the leeks and the garlics. Mm-hmm. And I've always said, yeah, but you forgot about the fact they were killing your babies and beating you with whips. You forgot mm-hmm. about all that stuff back there. It's better just to keep walking with the Lord. Yeah. The mm-hmm. old timers used to say, just grow where you're planted. You know, where you're at, put down roots and, and grow in that place and see what God do. If your mindset is always, well, I'll just kind of, maybe I'll be here until things get difficult. I promise you. I don't care if you're talking about a business. I don't care if you're talking about an entre- being an entrepreneur with something. I don't care if you're talking about ministry. If your mindset is, I'll try this out, and if things get difficult, I'll quit, I promise you, you'll always quit because there's always going to be difficulty. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16 that there was a, a, an effectual door that was open, but there were many adversaries. There will always be adversaries for every good thing that you're headed, you're headed into in, uh, in life with the Lord. So being committed, I'm, God said it, I'm going to stick with it. They used to say all the times, don't question in the dark what God's given you in the light. Right. And so just stick with what you're doing. Commitment. All right, anything else you were adding with that one? Let's, yeah, go I'll, ahead. I'll say with commitment, yeah. it made me think of this verse. You know, Paul, what a great example, right? Um, of just ministry as a Christian, all the above. But he's, he said of himself to Timothy, he was fully persuaded in God. He said, I know whom I believe, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. He says, God's committed to us. God's faithful, and we should be committed too. And it'll, it'll help. It'll help for sure. Amen. Well, the second one is, okay, so now you've got some place, and you're committed to being there. All right, what's the next step? And uh, we talked about this. I would think it's being connected, connected. All right. So if you're going to plant roots, you're going to you're going to you're going to grow where you're planted. And the next thing is to kind of get those roots connected to some other places and other people. And um, you know, I, I've said this before. I don't know where I came across this, but everybody in the world has about five things they really want in life. They want acceptance. They want to be appreciated. Um, they want um, security, they want uh, purpose, and I think the other one was uh, they want love. But, but purpose is one that everybody wants. They want to know that they are needed, that they've got a purpose in life. All right, so here's the deal. So you get someplace, you say, I'm connected. If you never get, I mean, you, I'm committed. If you never get connected with those yeah. people, then it is really easy to back back out. But if you get connected with the people, the place, say if you go to start a church somewhere, you start getting connected with the people of that area and you make some connections, you, you make friends, you make acquaintances. Now you have something to keep your focus on, a purpose in being there. And it's harder to back away once you've connected yourself to the people or the things around you. I think you had a verse while ago in Ephesians um, that's really, really good about the church or about the, the body. And what was it that you gave while ago? Yes, sir. So from whom the whole body fitly joined together, compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body and to the edifying of itself in love. And that's good because it says of every part, you know, like we're saying, to get connected, you got to find out what your part is. Yeah. And God's got a part for everybody. Yeah. Um, and that's it's just a blessing that 
that, you know, to be able to serve the Lord, right, find your part and it'll help you. It'll help you stay connected. You know, Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12 both talk about the body and the gifts and that, that you're here for a purpose. If you're a member, this is the problem. Sometimes people get to a church, they say, I'm committed to be part of this church, I'm going to join this church, but they never get connected. And then the first time they hit a problem, they're ready to move out and go find someplace else where they can commit, but not be connected. The more connected you are, the, the easier it is to stay into something you're connected to. And so God created it that way, that we're supposed to be supplying each other and effectually working with each other and connected to each other and compacted with each other, it says. And so, so you've got to find a way to do that. And that listen, that works in business. That works in, in ministry. Everything is being committed to the first step. But then you've got to find a way to, to find your purpose where you're connected and then, I mean, committed, and then connect with the people and the things that you're trying to do in that area. Right. I agree. And so another point just to bring up as well, um, not only to be committed and connected, but we also need to be consistent. Yeah. Um, we were thinking about different examples in the Bible, um, but consistency automatically, you know, leads to those results that you want. And um, you're not going to see them instantly, but you got to be consistent. I thought about, we were talking about Naaman um, when he wanted healing and they told him to go down into the, what is it, the, the river there yeah, and Jordan. just, you know, cleanse himself there every single day. And it was something, he said, if you had told me of a great thing, or he said, if we would have told you a great thing to do, you would have done it. But when we tell you the simple thing to do, and yet you won't do it, and those are the things that will bring you results. And he told him to do it seven times to dip himself in there. And he had some, like, why in the world would I be doing this? But it's those simple everyday habits um, that you do consistently that will lead to the results. I mean, just like Noah working every day on the ark, or you got the children of Israel walking around the wall of Jericho the seven days. Um, it's consistency leads to the results and what you want, but you can't, you can't, like, just in the gym, I'd reference that another time. You can't just walk in there with the excitement to see results, but then work out one day a week or one day a month and expect to see results. You have to stay consistent despite your feelings, despite what you feel like or what you want and other cool. desires. You have to stay consistent yeah. with your like with your goals and dreams of what you want um, to see that through. You have to be consistent. I'll tell you this too. Shout out my man Levi Wyatt. If you're watching, <laughs> shout out. He preached on um, that that thought in Samson or with Samson with the jawbone of the donkey. Mm -hmm. And he said, how many times did he have to swing that jawbone to kill a thousand men? Mm. And his thought was divine consistency. Just keep mm. swinging it mm. over and over and over and over. That's so, really good. You know, out. I've done, uh, I, I did a message one time about in Acts 1 when they're replacing uh, Judas. And they said, uh, who are we going to select to be the, the person to replace that position? And they, they chose out two men. And this is the requirement. They said it has to be someone that started from the very beginning with us at the baptism of John and has continued all the way through to this very oh, wow. moment. And, mm -hmm. and when you think about that, the, the person they, they selected had to be consistent. They had to just mm -hmm. stay. And if you think about it, he had to make it through all the quitting points mm -hmm. over those three years. That's good. Now, what he had to do was there was times in John 6, 66, where many of Jesus' disciples stopped working with him because he taught them a hard thing. Do you realize that those two men had the opportunity to jump ship because something difficult was told them? I don't, I don't really like that. Well, you can leave with everybody else, but you miss out on the thing that's coming three years later down the road if you don't stay consistent. They could have been like, uh, you know, in John and Luke 9, when two of the disciples said, let's just call down fire on these people and, and burn them all. They could have been like, I don't like the attitude of some of these guys around here. I think I'm out of here. Yeah, right. And they, they could have left. They could have later on been like, wait a minute, Judas, the treasurer, is a, is a thief? Man, I thought this place was pretty squared away, and now I find out that one of the key guys is a thief. I'm out of here. He had to make it through all those difficult stages sure. so that he can get to the place. I would say this in ministry. People say, well, I just got to find the perfect church. Well, you, you, wouldn't even be, you wouldn't even be able to be consistent in a church of Jesus when Jesus was the leader mm -hmm. because you'd probably quit on those quitting points as well. So the only way to make it to a place where you really feel like when we talk about success loosely of, of, of making to the end of doing something, finishing the race, you have to be able to make it through a lot of those quitting points. Paul said, I've finished my course. The only way Paul finished his course, 
is he had to make it through all the days and the nights and the deeps and the beatings and the stonings and all the things he had to go through, just keep going consistently even though there was some difficult times. And I promise you, if you're going to do anything in ministry, you have to be committed, you have to be connected, and you will have to be consistent because there'll be a lot of quitting places along the journey that will be difficult. You'll have to push through those those places. Now, the next three that we've got, we'll do very quickly, is um, this is where business will probably see these very different than the way we would see them in the Bible. And the first one of that is comparing, mm. comparing yourselves with yourselves, those types of things. And I think you've got 2 Corinthians 10, the verse we're talking about with that, if you've got that. Yes, sir. It's in 2 Corinthians 10, verses 12, if you're just wanting to write down scriptures. It says, For we dare not make of ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. So you got Paul here, one of the greatest Christians that's ever walked the earth, saying, it's not wise to compare yourselves among yourselves. And I think we get caught in that trap. And I heard someone say that um, that quote one time. It says, comparison is the deathbed of joy. Um, because you start getting so focused on what other people are doing that you start saying, well, I'm not doing enough. Or, man, I need to be a better person. There's two sides of the comparison. But what you've got to realize, and I was realizing this with a guy in business. We do the same business. And there was another guy that had had a lot more results than me. And I started comparing myself to him. He was a younger guy than me. And what I realized is his story is completely different. He's not married. He doesn't have all these responsibilities. He can just put his time and effort into this. And you can't look at other people's success and say, man, I need to be where they are. Or that story should be my story. Well, their story is different than your story. Right. And you have to rely on what you're doing to, to make that success happen. And just, you know, just stay consistent like we had talked about and not compare yourselves with other people. It's definitely not a wise thing to do. Sure. And let me let me say this, too, because um, another thought to deal with comparison, right, is we're not all the same. Yeah. And it's okay to be different. Yeah. Like, for example, my camera, the Eric, are a lot alike. I'm a lot more handsome and hilarious. So, like, I bring <laughs> that, the balance You're right. Here. That is yeah. hilarious. That yeah, is that hilarious. is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> so we got it. We need all parts, you know, yeah. for balance. You yeah. need every, every kind. Amen. Well, that, you know, that's, that is, it, okay, so it's real true. I've been saying this a little bit lately and it's come up is I gave the illustration. If you're, if you're watching, you'll see this. If you're not, I'll try to explain it. But the left hand might look at the right hand and it's, I'm right hand dominant. So the left hand may look at the right hand and say, you know, the way I view the world is I'm not used as much as you are. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and I'm, you know, you're using, you're using right hand over there way more than you're using me. And, and, and I don't, I don't think this is fair. Or he might say, um, you know, the world to me seems to spin the wrong direction that it does to you. And, and I turn everything the other way. And, and, but there's, we're different. We're all different, but, but to be honest with you, we're all necessary. We're all needed. Yes, and we're, sir. and there is differences. There's just differences of the way people do different things differently in ministries. Here's the problem that we have sometimes in this is you're going through like starting a church or you're, you're doing something in ministry or you're, or you're in a church. And you start looking at the church down the street. You say, well, you know, I know uh, brother so-and-so. He started a church. He just celebrated his 10-year anniversary. And, man, they're running 60, 80 people. They had a big conference meeting, had all these preachers in. And I've been doing it for 12 years. I don't have half the people he's got. Mm. You're in a different journey. You're in a different place. You're in a different time. You're a different person. Um, and you can't compare what God's doing with you the same way God's doing something somewhere else. And you don't know all the different things going on in that. I've seen people, uh, I've seen husbands or wives compare themselves to other husband and wives and say, mm -hmm. you know, we should be at this point in our stage of our life. Here we give you a statement that I think is extremely good when it comes to comparison. You don't compare because for this reason, sometimes we're comparing our behind the scenes footage with somebody else's highlight reels. You ever seen that? that you get the, so you know what's going on. I know what's going on behind the scenes at my life. And I'm like, man, you know, this is bad and that's bad. And I got to work on this and I work on that. And then I run into you at church and you come in and the family looks like they're doing great. Your wife's put together. You've worn a shirt and tie or sometimes. And, 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 uh, <laughs> and I'm thinking, man, you know, he's happy and he's, 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 and everything's must be great at their house. So I'm comparing 
the cleaned up highlight reel of you walking in with my behind the scene footage of my life Ooh. and those don't compare. They don't compare. And the same thing's true about starting some kind of ministry or doing something somewhere or being involved in something is uh, you said it, you said it so well. We are on different journeys. We're different people on different journeys. And I cannot compare myself and my journey with you and your journey. It doesn't compare the same way. I've just got to stick with walking with God, which brings us to the next point, which is being content. Content with God. Now, there's a a verse, and it says uh, in 1 Timothy 6, 6, Godliness with contentment is great gain. And, uh, and you've also got in Philippians 4, Paul says, I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. And he talked about, I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. And then he says that famous verse everybody uses, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, is the idea that no matter what I'm doing, um, I, no matter where I'm at in life, if I can just trust that God knows where I'm at and God knows the journey that I'm on and I can trust in Him, then I can be content even if things, because here's the idea, I'm committed to a place, I'm connected, I'm going to be consistent. I'm not comparing myself to people left and right, but I've also, I'm going to hit days that are not so good. I'm going to see days that are great. I'm going to have to be content in the days that are not so good that God still has me where I'm supposed to be. I'm content with Him, to trust Him in the midst of what I'm going through. You think you want to add to that or any thoughts that go along with that? I just think so often, you know, it's a battle of the mind. Yes. And um, and the out of mind is the devil's workshop, right? And I'm not saying that we just let our minds wander. So often, it's just you just run all these rabbits in your head and um, you gotta, you gotta deal with the reality side of it. Right. And, you know, trust the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding. And that's what happens so often is discontentment comes when we start leaning to our own understanding mm-hmm. and God's ways are higher than ours. His thoughts are higher than ours. So just trust the Lord. And if you're doing what you know, God has called you to do, praise the Lord. Just focus on that. Um, you know, put your boots on and keep walking. Right. And don't lean to your own understanding. I'll share a, um, I'll share just a testimony. It's not, it doesn't, it's not good, but one of the things that, that we try to do, or at least I've tried to do, and I've tried to get our guys to do, is to be transparent and be real. And uh, so I'd say this, and I'm telling you, in the nine years that I've been the senior pastor here, I've been here for a lot longer, but the senior pastor here, there have been days that have been extremely difficult. Things that I could, I've never, I've always read through 2 Corinthians and understood 2 Corinthians, I felt like. But in leadership, I've understood levels of 2 Corinthians better than I ever stood, understood before. And Paul making statements like, you know, I gladly spend and be spent, yet the more I love, the less I be loved. So most things become real. Or when he's saying at the end of a long list of all the difficulties, went th- difficulties he's gone through, then he says, oh, ye Corinthians, our heart is enlarged. And he's just going through all these things. And there are times I love fishing. I love fishing. And I've decided that I love fishing on the coast better than I do fishing in lakes. And I, I love fishing, period, but I love fishing down at the coast. And so there are many times when difficulties hit that, I'm, that my mind will think, life would sure be better if you were down on the coast fishing every day. <laughs> you know, if you could just retire and move down there and go and start fishing, you could do so much better. And you know what? There's churches down there, and they could maybe even put you on staff, and you, could, <laughs> you, could, you, could, and you, you can start thinking that way. What I'm saying is, with all this, you've got to be committed to where you're at, connected where you're at, consistent where you're at, not comparing yourself to others, and then you've got to be content in this sense. I, I, this is a difficult day. This is a difficult week, a difficult month, a difficult year, but I'm content that I know how to be abased and I know how to be abound. I'm content with the Lord mm. and that I can do all things through Christ. That means I can, I can make it through the difficult days and I can make it through the good days being content with God. And so you've got to get to the place where you are content with God. It's not about my pleasures. It's not about, you know, you're saying I'm in Texas and it's 110 degrees and I'm, you walk outside and you spontaneously combust. Amen. This is horrible. <laughs> Oh, yeah. um, you know, you got a glass of ice water and it turns into vapor before you get to your car. It's, it's horrible, all right? You've got to be content that if God put me here, God can take care of me here. Yes, so sir. contentment. 
The last one that kind of goes along with it is complacency. Complacent. Because you don't, you do want to be content with the Lord, but you don't want to get to the place where you're like, well, there's no need for me to try to do better. So somebody would say, well, I get someplace, I'm committed and connected and all that stuff, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to be, I'm just going to be content, meaning I'm just going to sit back. I'm never going to push. I'm never going to go knock on a door. I'm never going to try to increase what we're doing. So we're not talking about commitment in that case, because that would take us to complacency and being complacent. And complacent just means it's overly satisfied with myself and my achievements. I don't think we ever want to get to the place where we say, well, I'm dissatisfied with just, you know, us four no more. We're good. I think we do want we do want to be content with the Lord, but not complacent to where we're not pushing to try to to do more. And do you have the verse Philippians three twelve? You want to read that verse? Yes, sir, I do. Um, it says, "Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus." Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. And I, the reason I read that verse as well is I think we've, we, we look back and we see all the things that we have done in life and we think, that's enough. You yeah. know, we, we justify it. And I, I was talking to this, and this is not the case with, with all older people. Don't, don't get me wrong. You might be an older person on here. That's not me. You know, this is not everybody. But I've, what I've come to find, and I've been in multiple churches helping in ministry, is the older people have said, I've done enough. And so when we need help, the gospel still needs to be reached out. There's a world that needs to be reached for Christ. And we have a lot of older people who said, I've given my life to ministry. I've done all these things. It's my time to just sit back and let everybody else do it. That's not the case. We ought to be keep, we ought to keep working and keep living and keep and staying excited for the Lord and getting the gospel out and not saying, okay, I've done enough. I've done all these things. So now I'm done and getting complacent with the things that I've already done. You know, that verse 14 right at the end of it says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And so the idea is, let's, we need to keep pressing, um, not becoming complacent and overly satisfied, but keep keep pressing. And listen, if Paul made the statement, I haven't attained, I haven't grasped onto perfection and being great yet. If Paul could say, I haven't arrived, then certainly all of us can say, I have not arrived. Well, we've reached uh, 300 people. Well, we're, we're good. Well, you know, that, that may be, it may be all that God wants you to reach. I'm not saying comparison wise, but I am saying that, all right, so let's just keep trying to reach more people. Let God add to the church whatever he wants to add. But the idea is let's keep trying to find ways to do more to reach people. So we've, our church has gotten to a place, it's at a spot. I don't know really what the next step is, but I do know that at the spot we're at, all of a sudden, guys came in from different places that are way smarter than me and, and, and wiser than the Bible and better teachers. They've come in and now we have a Bible college. And then we had young guys come in like y'all that have a hunger and a zeal for starting churches. And the next thing you know, I'm thinking, all right, well, the goal is maybe we get to this number and redo these ministries. God said, nope, don't get complacent where you're at. We're hitting a new level that you never saw coming, but now we're about to change gears and hit a new level. The new level is, and we did it. We just did it. Get a map of the state of Texas. Put pins in all these places you want to start churches. And let's, through the Bible College, start churches in every one of these towns in the state of Texas. And let's flood Texas with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. And all these principles are going to be part of that. Every one of these, we're going to be teaching men that come in to go do these ministries. That Hey, look, you're going to have to get someplace and be committed. When you get there, you're going to have to get connected. When you're there, you're going to have to be consistent over the long haul. You can't compare yourself to somebody else in a different place that's doing things a different way. And you're going to have to be content with God doing something in your life. But don't get complacent. Keep striving for excellence uh, for the Lord. And those are things that in starting a church, maintaining a church, it doesn't matter what you're doing in life. These principles are principles that are necessary. Now, let me make this last statement is this. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that the Lord Jesus Christ was committed. Amen. I'm thankful that he connected. I'm thankful that he was consistent. I'm thankful that, you know, I don't know if there really could be a comparison, but I'm thankful that he didn't become complacent and just decide, well, I've done enough, but he went all the way to the cross mm. uh, for us. And I'm thankful. And I'm thankful that he had to go through the difficult points to get there, and he still went anyway. And so it's a great example for us to just keep going 
for the Lord. And something else I wanted to point out too, I just kind of got excited about it, so I, I just kind of put my finger out here. But it, it, when it's talking about the Jesus, it says he endured yeah. the pain and endured the cross for the joy that was set before yeah. him. And that was you and me. So he realized that there were going to be hard times and there's going to be this journey he has to go through, but it's about those results that are coming. And so whether you're in business, whether you're in ministry, whether you're in any aspect, you got to keep going and enduring these hard things, knowing the joy and the results that are going to come ahead. You've got to go through all these things and realize and like, hey, I know it's hard right now, but man, the, the things that are coming. I mean, Jesus, he's thinking why, why he's going through all those sufferings on the cross. Man, Dylan's going to get saved, yeah. and um, Brother Eric's going to lead his dad to the Lord. And, um, and and just, you know, it's it's an exciting thing, and he's thinking all that in his mind. Yeah, I'm going through this suffering, but, man, look at all those people who who aren't going to go to hell, all those people yeah. who are have lives changed and, and the joy of the Lord, all those people. I've got to keep going for that. Yeah. Um, and so you've got to focus more on the results that are coming than the pain that you're going through at that time, and that will bring you through. And then when you get there, it will be exciting that you are there. Um, you just got to focus on those things and just endure those hard things. And I'll say this, too, because um, all this sounds great. It's alliterated. There's Bible verses, praise <laughs> the Lord. Yeah. What if I'm not committed? What if I'm struggling with making connections and I'm not being consistent? Start where you are. Yeah. Start where you are. You can only do that. You can't you can't look 30 years down the road and say, hey, I'm going to be this or that. You got to start where you are and make the application now. Um, back to what Mike Kay was saying a moment ago, we heard a, a pastor in Iowa is 89 years old. I think he was 89 years old. He was really old. He was pretty old. <laughs> Amen. I mean, he's not as old as Brother Eric. No, I'm sorry. Right. But, uh, they, he was asked by one of his church staff, when are you going to retire? And in all seriousness, he said, I'll retire when the rich man stops burning. Mm. Mm. Because there's, there's still a need. There's a great right. need. And brethren, sistren, we all need to, <laughs> we all need to see the need yeah. and take the lead on it. Yeah. Amen. See the need and take the lead. It, what you just said, I just thought about this because I was thinking about the next couple of verses in Philippians that he just got through reading. And you said, um, which was great. If, so you're saying, well, I'm not committed. I'm not you know, connected. So wherever you're at right now, start. Okay, so what he just what he just said, what Paul said, I haven't attained. I'm just pressing towards the mark. I'm I'm just going. He's writing this to exhort the church at Philippi. Hey, look, don't don't rest and just you know I, I haven't attained. Keep pressing. Keep going. Keep forgetting behind and moving forward. And he goes on and he says this. This is good. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, as many as saved, and he says, be thus minded. Like you need to all be this minded to, to press forward. And then he says this. And if any thing, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, so if you're not of this mind that there's a need to press forward and keep going, it says God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, where whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing, brethren. Be followers together of me, and mark them which walk not not so as they have us for an example. And this is what he's saying. He's saying, look. If, if you need to get this same mindset that I'm just giving to press forward, if you don't have that mindset yet, yet let God reveal that to you that you need to have that mindset. And then he says, just get on track with me and let's go forward and follow me as we move forward to doing this. Um, so the idea is just like he said, maybe you're not there right now. All right. So make that commitment in your heart today. I'm going to be there. I'm going to start putting these things in practice. I'm going to do it. And let me just close with this thought. Somebody could say, in this idea of comparison, somebody would say, well, you know what? Jesus wasn't very successful. Mm-hmm. And say, why not? Well, because at the end of his journey, he really only had about 12 with him and um, that, that were there in that core group. And uh, one of them uh, was full of the devil, and one of them denied him and betrayed him. And when he got to the cross, only one was present. John, Mm. well, it doesn't seem like much success. Well, what you view as success, we're talking about Bible, God may say is the greatest success story that's ever been told. And uh, what you, I'm saying what you see as a failure, God may say is the greatest success story that's ever been told. And so you cannot compare yourself based on, I read something the other day that said that churches think they're successful based on how much money they got in the bank and how many people they got in the pews. 
That's not an accurate assessment of success. Amen. You can go to the Dallas Cowboys Stadium and find tons of money and tons of people sitting in the pews, but they're not successful for God. Right. So it doesn't have to do with numbers. It has to do with faithfulness. God never ta- called us, honestly, to say this, to be successful. He called us to be faithful. Amen. And if we're faithful, then you will be successful. Right. And so these are the, the principles we've, that we thought that would be helpful to getting us going that direction. Anything you want to say, add to it? Well, it was something I wanted to add, and I don't mean to keep doing this. We just get excited about this stuff, and we want to exhort y'all as well. But when nobody in their right mind, looking now back at the Bible, would say Noah was a failure. Yeah. Noah did exactly what God had him to do. He only had eight converts, and he did all that work. And every day he might have had that struggle. Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? I'm not seeing the results. Or all these people are mocking. All these people are living in sin. I really am not making a dent, but he was in the perfect will of God at that time. And so just because you're not seeing results does not mean that you're not doing what God would have you to do. Just stay consistent. Stay following the Lord. We need you. We need you to stay uh, focused for the Lord because, hey, there's coming a day where Jesus Christ is going to come back for us. And so stay faithful till that day um, of the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just Just stay faithful. Stay faithful in whatever God's called you to do today. You say, well, there's people in Africa that need a, need a church. There's people in areas of Central Texas that need a church. Well, you're just as much in the will of God today as God's preparing you as you are tomorrow when you've started the church or whatever you're doing. Yes, just stay faithful. Whatever God's told you to do and all these principles, stay faithful to God. God will direct the path and God will get you where you need to be. God knows exactly what he's doing and the timing of it is, is completely up to God and our job is just to stay focused on him and he will direct our path. That's the, the, the victory vision uh, for this week and hopefully this will help you in any area of your life that you're going through. We want to try to encourage you to share these with other people and help them uh, get a hold of these truths and this content. And if you have questions, we do another question and answer and we'll do this week as well. And we'll post that uh, pretty soon. If you have questions of things you thought would be good for us to cover, please share those with us. And then we will try to answer them for you and maybe try to be a blessing. But share this with other people if you can along the way as well. God bless you. We love you.